the next uh, uh, section of today will be broadcasting from uh, from Salford, uh, from uh, Professor Samia Nefti Menziani, who will talk uh, about uh, several things. Uh, let's say as a general topic about uh, education uh, in, in robotics uh, uh, for with and for industry uh, and a, a new uh, initiative called the Smart E, which is a, um, an educational initiative. So she also does many, many things. Uh, you, I'm just letting you have uh, things. The last one is this Mercury action. So I leave the floor to Samia. Which Thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, Fabio, for uh, the invite. Uh, and uh, good evening, good, after, uh, good morning, good afternoon for all the sites here present today. Um, um, I will hopefully try uh, within these next 30 minutes to present the Smart, Smart in Marie Curie, which is a research and training program fun, funded recently by the European Commission and their Framework 7 and talk about its scientific objectives and the research project that uh, we are going to undertake and the opportunities for the fellows who may uh, apply, hopefully, after this uh, talk uh, and might have to uh, hopefully extend the knowledge and the technical concept that they have learned so far in the, uh, in the topics such as embodiment, uh, soft robotics, uh, cognitive systems, so on and so forth. Uh, to <laughs> Then applying to a real world application and to uh, two sectors, uh, mainly uh, food and aerospace uh, manufacturing. Then the Smart E Consortium uh, is, as you could see, uh, University of Salford is uh, coordinating this project, but uh, we have academic and industrial partners. Uh, we have University of Zurich, uh, Scuola Superiore Santana, Technical University of Munich, Institute Italiano uh, di Tecnologia, and the University of Sheffield, uh, working with AMRC. And the industrial project uh, partners involved are Airbus and uh, Festo. Okay, just uh, again, my name has been Isamia, Professor Samia Niftimeziani. I hold the chair in Artificial Intelligence and Robotics. I'm currently uh, the director of the Advanced Robotics and Autonomous Systems Research Center at the University uh, of Salford. University of Salford has got 20,000 students, 2,500 staff, for those who doesn't know, uh, heard of, uh, about it, and uh, has got uh, then a robotics originated in 1980s, then when it was, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, it was chosen by the government to be the site for the UK's National Advanced Robotics Research Centre. The expertise that we have is end effectors, biological inspired robots, soft actuation. We have 20 years working in this area, rehabilitation robotics, industrial robotics, food automation, and uh, human robot interaction and manned autonomous systems. Um, then one of the main research uh, that I have uh, just uh, uh, you know talked about is uh, area is the food automation. You have to know that within the United Kingdom, manufacturing is by far the largest manufacturing se sector, having a turnover of approximate, approximately 80 billion euro per year. Uh, UK consumers spend in the region of uh, 170 billion euro on food and drinks per year, and these represent 20% of all consumer spending. Then the UK food industry also uh, buys two-thirds of the country entire agriculture produce. That, that's enormous. However, despite its huge size of the, really the food industry, it's not quite a particularly technological advanced, and uh, use, uh, uses very high level of manual labor then the photograph seen here, really, is not uh, uncommon of food uh, factory uh, throughout the world. Within the UK, there are 10,000 food manufacturing sites employing about half a, uh, half a million people. The food industry then, as you could see, uh, represents a very important part of uh, UK economy. Although these figures are for the UK, a similar picture, I'm sure, can be seen across much of Europe and uh, all over the world. Then food factories are typical cold, uh, maybe four to five degree year. Uh, they can be noisy and uh, also tasks are often very repetitive and, and boring. This makes the job very uh, undesirable and for this reason, 
food manufacturers can often struggle to find uh, and retain their workers. Uh, lower wages is part, uh, other parts of the world also uh, means companies often struggle to compete with overseas manufacturers. As you could see then, robotics and automation can provide a real benefit uh, here by reducing the alliances on manual labor and therefore hopefully reduce manufacturing costs. Automation also provides other benefits such as increased production uh, consistency, reduced waste and also the improved yield. Uh, the food here industry has rigorous hygiene standards and they can be difficult uh, to achieve when large numbers of human operators are used. A typical prepacked sandwich which you might buy at the supermarket could have been touched uh, by as many of 20 different people. Uh, then this is obviously a potential source of co you know, contamination and replacing the people within machines significantly reduces, reduces these. The Nathan, if you could just run the video uh, one, please. It's very common uh, in the food industry to find tasks which could be automated very easily. Uh, then, um, but which are big platform money. This video shows an example. The factory made biscuits. Uh, the biscuits travel along the conveyor belt in row, uh, as you can see. However, the position and orientation of the biscuits uh, vary slightly. This causes a problem for the packing uh, machine need the, all the biscuits to be lined up in a row to achieve this uh, then uh, two people sh stood next uh, to the conveyor belt and manually positioned the, the biscuits then the company spoke to a robotics uh, uh, an automation company who processed using a vision system and robot to uh, correct the problem uh, this was like uh, likely to cost a hundred thousand euros uh, we showed the company that a very simple mechanism such as the one that you have seen Costing just a couple of thousands, a thousand euro could be used to align uh, then uh, the uh, biscuits. Then also, as mentioned previously, sandwich assembly uh, uses a large number. If you could run a uh, Nathan, please. Assembly uses a large number of people. Uh, in this uh, project, we worked with a large UK bakery to develop an automated system to perform a number of tasks currently performed manually. Then once completed, the sandwich must be sliced into two triangle pieces. Uh, this is achieved automatically using ultrasound the knife. However, the cut um, should be made perfectly from one corner to another. And so before entering the cutter, the sandwich is manually repositioning. Then the system we developed uses a vision system to calculate how the sandwich must be realigned. Uh, the sandwich is then automatically li lifted from the conveyor belt, as you could see, rotate and then placed back to the conveyor before uh, being out. cut. Once cut, the two triangle sandwiches then are needed to stack one on the top and the other before packaging. Uh, packaging. Then we developed the system which performed this task automatically uh, then as you see. Then uh, I think things get complicated uh, because the food manufacturing then one of the most significant challenge faced by, as you see, the automation industry in food is grasping food product. Food's product can be very, uh, 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 very enormously. Uh, they might be sticky, slippery, flexible, delicate uh, or deformed than had, uh, when you handle them. They mean traditional end effectors such as vacuum or jaws cannot be used. Uh, slides of tomato, for example, are used widely in the food industry, in things like sandwich and pizza. Okay, the placement of these is always performed manually and effector do not exist capable of grasping them without causing damage. Um, if you could uh, run the, please again, um, Nathan. Yeah, then to address these, we have developed an end effector which uses uh, the Bernoulli principle to grasp the tomato aside. Then uh, this, uh, this clipper has been patented, then fast moving air over the upper surface, as you can see, of the tomato causes the pressure reduction and therefore allow the slice to be lifted. The gripper can also be used in many other uh, slide uh, foods. Okay, thank you. Then, uh, end effector, then French sheets of lasagna also, uh, if you could run that, please, uh, Latin, of lasagna are another food uh, product which cannot be lifted using traditional techniques. 
Okay, then the main problem here is caused by lasagna being sticky. It's, uh, it's quite simple to pick up, but the most, the most stress causes the lasagna sheet to remain stuck to whatever was used to lift it. To overcome this problem, then as you could see, we have developed an end effector as a roller, and the technique is very uh, similar to how the chief might use the rolling, uh, for example, pin to lift the pastry. Then again, um, a developed system, which you can see in the video, which for more working using a system of floral combined with the motion of brunette, but I think we leave this uh, given the time. And the low cost pat packaging, as you could see, many food manufacturers are small to medium size enterprise or SMEs, basically. As a result, they do not uh, have finances available to invest in advanced automation equipment. Then we were approached by a small food manufacturer who was interested in purchasing automated uh, case packaging, but could not afford to basically the system available uh, to afford to buy it. Yeah? We undertook a study to determine uh, if a low-cost gravity-fed machine could be developed. And you could see it then, uh, it's on the uh, video. The system uh, then was placed at the end, as you could see, at the end of the existing production line, the machine used the ship, uh, the ship the, to direct the product into the cases, as you can uh, see it. Then the system could be uh, potentially sold for less than 10,000 euros, then a uh, cost is always uh, is always a, a criteria for manufacturers. Thank you, Nathan. Okay, then uh, as I showed you, we have been doing a very, could be very interesting and um, not so challenging, let's say, but uh, a very um, automated. There is no uh, a big, big research there, but uh, I think uh, we have shown that with a simple mechanism, we could have a, a very effective results with a very low cost. But of course, we have been doing a lot of research in, over the 20 years, really, in the exteriors and the factor. Then, uh, as we can see uh, here, each food, uh, as we said, each food product has required a different design of a gripper. Then uh, this means when the robot is uh, retasked, uh, it's uh, often necessary to change the gripper fitted to the robot. As you could see, then the human hand is a multi-purpose gripper able to grasp and manipulate a broad range of product size and shapes. There is an increased interest in developing these the exteriors and effector which are able to grasp bar, vast number of objects, foods, or all, all type of shapes and, and, and products. We have developed a number of different exterior hands, uh, including this one, which is a uh, which is used, pneumatic muscles located in a forearm, the power, each of the fingers join. <coughs> Sorry, the hand you see here is being uh, teleoperated uh, then using the data globe, uh, which measures an uh, angle of each of the user fingers joined and feed this information to the uh, robot controller. Yeah. <coughs> Another research on the, uh, this is another dexterous the hand, which uh, we have been developing in collaboration with the Italian Institute of Technology. It uses 18 electro, uh, electric motors, and it's the same size as the hand of four years old uh, child. It's highly dexterous with 22 degree of freedom. Nathan, if you could run the video, but does not provide robustness and needed to work in industrial environment. Unfortunately, then controlling such as a large number of joints is computational very difficult as well for manufacturers to be uh, used. Then recent development in neuroscience have suggested that uh, as human, we do not control each joint individually, but uh, instead uh, control, um, control, uh, control patterns of, mo uh, of motions, if you want, called what we call synergies. Uh, then each energy, uh, synergy causes the motion of multi-joints simultaneously, and uh, the vast majority of the object can be grasped using <coughs> first two motion synergies. Uh, it's therefore possible to uh, design robotics, uh, hence uh, which use actuation to power individual synergy other than individual uh, joints. This considerably reduces the number of uh, actuators uh, required, uh, this reduces as well the cost and potentially increase the mechanical robustness needed to basically to be used for in fa manufacturing context. Once of, uh, one of the projects we will be undertaking within Smart E project, which I will uh, develop uh, in a few minutes, will, uh, describe in a few minutes, will be development of low-cost and robust exterior gripper suitable for industrial use. 
in food as well as in aerospace. Then we have been as well, uh, it's expected that in the future robots are and human operators will operate uh, much more closely in an industrial uh, environment. Conventional then robots are not well suitable to uh, these as they usually uh, are heavy, usually heavy and, and stiff. Then they, are being, they have been much interest in developing robots which updates uh, the soft actuation between uh, interactions, sorry, between people. Uh, this has hold to much um, research in the area of soft and compliant actuation system. As you could see, uh, pneumatic uh, muscles are one uh, form of actuation well su uh, suited to this uh, new model of robot design, basically. Then at Salford, we have uh, wor we worked with pneumatic muscles over 20 years, basically about 20 for about 20 years. We have used them in large range of applications from grippers to working robots to exoskeletons for rehabilitation. Then we have developed new uh, mathematical models and control techniques for actuation as well. We have also designed version of actuation which contain integrated force, pressure, and displacement sensor, and even produced a version able to self-heal uh, when it's damaged. Then you could see here, uh, uh, Nathan, the pneumatic muscle have allowed us to produce a number, number of, you could see, uh, biologically inspired robot. As I said, it's over 20 years, and uh, this one it was maybe seven, eight years ago. It was uh, a funded UK funded project, uh, which we had to exhibit in, in a museum. Then you can see here two robots based on uh, anatomy of a dog and a primate as well. The system uh, replicates some of the soft uh, insertion that occur between animals and uh, the actuation introduce uh, compliances uh, into the system, yeah? Then uh, soft robot, uh, the, the, we have, uh, although the robots shown previously use compliant actuation, they, they, they still have a stiff and rigid me mechanical structure. Uh, Nathan, if you, could, uh, if you could activate this, please. The next slide. Thank you. Uh, the still, uh, the still present a safety concern as a, con a collision with people are still likely to lead to injury. Another approach that we are investigating is to produce robust robotic system, which are actually soft structure. Then one uh, method we are investigating is the use of pneumatic muscles in the form of uh, continuum actuation. Uh, this system do not consist of any rigid part, but are still able to position, of course, the end of uh, the limb accurately, accurately. In addition, the benefit of this type of system, uh, then, thank you, uh, is they do not have a single point of joint rotation like traditional robot uh, really joint. Uh, they mean that they, if parts of the robot is uh, restrained, the reminder of the limb will flex. Uh, this allows the robot to reach around the obstacle, which is needed really in manufacturing. Then another area of uh, expertise, uh, it's uh, uh, research in autonomous systems. Then we have been uh, involved in one of the largest uh, and uh, first program ever, you know, funded by uh, the UK government. It's a 9.1 million pound uh, project on autonomous systems program, which is really uh, aimed at uh, uh, driving SME engagement and developing technology with, uh, uh, within the emerging uh, autonomous systems market. Then it's a, a program led by the Northwest, the Northwest uh, uh, Aerospace Alliance, uh, working closely with BA system and national nuclear laboratories and uh, other partners such as Manchester, Lancaster, Liverpool and nuclear universities. Salford is leading the autonomous uh, mission management uh, and uh, planning and management. Um, a, a brief overview of what we uh, at Salford, what we are doing in robotics, the main research topics really uh, tackled in the center. Then uh, I would like to come back again to the program and the project has been recently funded by the European Commission, which is a um, initial training network uh, called Smart E, which is a Marie Curie uh, art initial training network, sorry, uh, which are highly uh, prestigious. They are focused on the training uh, of the next generation of European leading experts in engineering and science. Basically, for those who doesn't know, uh, of course, I'm talking mainly for the students maybe who are in Japan or Osaka who are not, not necessarily familiar with this scheme. Then to, they are funded to increase the European competitiveness in research and development and uh, to solve research challenges of global concern. 
that's really what uh, Marie Curie uh, ITN is about. However, we Smart E addresses um, our uh, initial network. Marie Curie Smart E addresses sustainable manufacturing through advanced robotics uh, training in Europe. Then uh, it will be implemented through the following objective. Then we will ensure that the first one is to develop a leading European doctoral training program in advanced robotics, and uh, we will be recruiting and training 15 high-caliber researchers. Then and uh, to improve their career prospect to, uh, by exposing to different working culture in academia and business sector internationally, and by providing them with complementary business leadership and personal skills, and to expose to different work, expose them to different working cultures basically in academia and business sectors internationally. Then, next slide, yeah. Then uh, the key scientific objective, uh, then uh, Smart E will tackle the factory of the future, which should be modular, flexible, and automated. Then the future manufacturing landscape will bring new challenges, as we, could, we have seen previously, for example, in food automation, which increases, uh, will increase customization, shorten product lifetime cycle, novel and hybrid materials, uh, uh, rapid manufacturing and near part and uh, near net part and high level of uh, product performance at low cost. This is a key, issue, uh, key thing. Then Smart E uh, will bring together, then it's bringing together uh, experts in advanced manufacturing, embodied intelligence, novel compliant actuation, human factor, uh, um, and also uh, soft robotics in order to uh, to resolve uh, to to uh, to propose solutions, then we are going. Uh, fellows will be uh, who are going to be recruited. Uh, hopefully, will be participating in project organized around the following topics: then the exterior soft and compliant robotics in manufacturing, reconfigurable and logistics robotics, and safety and human robot interaction and cooperation. Then uh, these research topics will uh, then, as far as the reconfigurable and logistics robotics, then uh, these research topic will address important issues on self-optimizing, self-reconfiguring, uh, re sorry, self-healing and self-monitoring process, capable to uh, communicate and cooperate to respond quickly by uh, adjusting their uh, schedule to match the evolving execution circumstances in a way that continue uh, to continue to maximize the quality of their uh, joint activities. The research challenges will be then to develop techniques for mapping, planning, scheduling in large heterogeneous robot team that uh, guarantee safety, robustness, and reliability, and also maybe propose uh, some uh, cognitive uh, control architecture capable of working with minimal, no technical and qualitative description of task, and also cognitive models for knowledge processing, learning to enable machines, robots, okay, in a factory to optimize their operation and respond to a new situation. Then, uh, for as far as, as I said, the topic uh, projects are concerned in configurable and logistics robotics, uh, we have three uh, positions and three research projects. One. Uh, hosted uh, two hosted by University of Salford and one by AMRC in Sheffield here in UK. The first uh, project will be about proposing uh, to develop a cognitive multi-agent framework for modeling the coordination, communication and cooperation between distributed robots and machines. The, the second will be more about development of real-time monitoring for swarm cells and prove a system to sense and control multi-dynamic systems. Huh? The third project will be about a novel mathematical model for, of maintenance to handle complex interaction so that maintenance can become uh, fully automated in, in manufacturing. Then the uh, second, the exterior soft and compliant robotics, then we have here flexi, uh, uh, this will address issues such as development of end effectors focusing on novel mechanical design that promotes a new softer, more compliant robot. This will require research in mechanical design, actuation, control, sensing, cognition. And also we are investigating the soft robotics and morphological computation uh, to control those soft robots. Okay. 
Then the research, we have six projects in this area. Then one, uh, two, one will be based at Salford, which will concern more the design of low-cost and robust mechanical dexterous gripper, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, design of low-cost sensor system, construction and control of new dexterous gripper, testing, uh, you know, uh, the, um, and after testing this, uh, basically, this prototype on industrial robots uh, with uh, actual industrial products. The second project will be about design the morphology and kinematics of the gripper, development of prototype octopus bait soft robot, robotics gripper for manipulation in manufacturing. The third one uh, project will be uh, based in IIT, will be about developing technology and components for new generation of robots that coexist and cooperate with people. Uh, the fourth project will be uh, based in uh, Scuola Superiore Santana and uh, will be about realization of uh, the materials for the octopus based soft robotics manipulator. Uh, the, object, the, the objective of the project five will be about development of morphological computation based control framework to export soft structure application to the octopus based of course uh, platform manipulator uh, built by the, uh, the fellows or the early stage researchers who are, will be uh, based in IIT and uh, Zurich uh, will be um, will be integrated in, in, in manufacturing, then either for uh, in food and uh, also the aerospace. Then the uh, last uh, project the, uh, is about development of the prototype of soft robotics gripper for manufacturing application. Then uh, as far as the topic on, research, on safety and human robot interaction, that the main focus of this topic will be on developing new ways of interaction with industrial service robots and improving safety by making the robot alert to user via naturalistic, for example, means. The new research uh, program, then will, uh, this research program will investigate specific issues of, on high performance haptic teleoperation systems and manipulation learning mechanism for dexterous, for compliant robots. Uh, the objective, uh, then one project will be based in IIT. It will be about development of high performance haptic teleoperation system for dexterous manipulation of remote objects. The second one in Technical University of Munich will investigate the design control of musculoskeletal and robotic system and we will test muscular robotics uh, system in a simple construction task. Then uh, the last one, which is, which will be um, a project, uh, again, a second project at UM will be the development of collaborative construction task and test results uh, of turn taking system um, for human robot co working scenario. Then uh, the fourth project is allocated, uh, will be based in Festo. Um, and um, here, a brief description of the training program before I finish the presentation. Then the, pre the training. Uh, of the program we are proposing um, will provide a balance, hopefully, on a locally delivered scientific and technical training. This, of course, will include individual uh, early stage researchers and early researchers, project and local training modules, as well as a network-wide, as you could see, uh, wide training activities, uh, like such as induction course, summer schools, and complementary uh, training schools given by industrial, uh, industrial companies. Secondment uh, will also form an essential part of the training as they will provide uh, conduit for transfer of ideas and novel problem solving techniques, hopefully, offering uh, then excellent business uh, perspective and exposure uh, to the challenges and drivers between the uh, two chosen sectors, uh, namely uh, aerospace and food. Then this uh, end up my talk. Uh, thank you very much. Then uh, uh, just uh, I will announce that the Marie Curie Fellowship will be uh, for, of course, the student who would be interested in applying for those fellow Marie Curie Fellowship. Then uh, they will be posted hopefully on the Shanghai platform, but also will be uh, advertised via the job.com, you know, um, other channels. Uh, but I would recommend the fellows to. Uh, go on Eurasec uh, to um, for any uh, any information. Those fellowship will be hopefully advertised in uh, by the end of December, beginning of January.
Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Can hear. I apologize with you and all the other speakers of today because today we are really constrained by timing. I, I, I just uh, do uh, open for question coming offline and maybe also application for this uh, for these uh, research posts. Uh, I, I Thank want you. just to comment. I, I just want to comment that uh, your talks show clearly shows clearly that uh, uh, this is uh, an eyebrow. Maybe this embodied uh, cognition is an eyebrow academic uh, topic. But it is also a very practical one with potential uh, uh, huge impact uh, on the world of every day. So this is very absolutely, my talk. Yeah. absolutely, uh, and this is why I wanted uh, really to to uh, present this. And thank you, Fabio, again for the opportunity. Thank you. Oh, thank you.